Chapter One: Unexpected Opportunities. Put two cows on a billboard with a bucket of paint and a brush, and they will create some unexpected opportunities. In 1995, we gave the cows responsibilities for taking the message of Chick Fil A to the public. From their perch high above the highway, and the now on the radio and television, they remind people in their unique style to eat more chicken. The cows still haven't learned to spell, and their grandma leaves a lot of lot to be desired. But the opportunities are real. Five years after they painted their first billboard, Chick Fil A had doubled our sales volume, achieving annual sales more than one billion dollar. The lesson from the cow is the lesson from my life: take advantage of unexpected opportunity. We had not planned a major billboard campaign. But the cows created so much buzz when they appeared. We realized they were presenting a special opportunity to increase our awareness of Chick Fil A and have fun at the same time. The history of Chick Fil A, in fact, is a series of unexpected opportunities. When we responded to them, we often found ourselves richly blessed. The Chick Fil A chicken sandwich itself was born in the wake of an unexpected opportunity. When one of my first restaurants burned to the ground, I found myself with time on my hands, and the availability to develop new recipe. The boom in the mall development in nineteen nine nineteen seventies and eighties gave Chick Fil A the opportunity to expand our business quickly while minimizing real estate cost and identifying ourselves with the quality shopping experience. Chick Fil A Kids Meal offered the offer us the opportunity to influence the children with a price they carried, with a positive message. A chance encounter with a teenage boy who had lost his parents, and led to opportunities to have results resulted in the establishment of Chick Fil A Windshield Center Camp Foundation, which supports foster homes, summer camps, and college scholarship, touching the lives of thousands of children and young adults. And literally saving some of them. The lesson that is continuously, continually in force in me is that to take advantage of unexpected opportunity, we must have ourselves available. If we had left lofty, long-range goals for our company growth, our capital might have been so tied up in construction that we would we would have been unable to respond to these opportunities. Many successful people I know set magnificent goals for themselves, then let nothing stand in the way of their achievement. I don't engage in that kind of long-range planning. Instead, I leave myself and my company available to make advantages of opportunities as the day rises. I'm not suggesting that we wander aimlessly, waiting for opportunities to drop out of the sky. We commit ourselves to a purpose. And we don't overcommit our resources. That way of thinking has allowed us to grow steadily into billion-dollar company, a business with one thousand restaurants, while responding to the needs of the people around us. Many many of the unexpected opportunities we encounter are small but significant. On a Saturday morning, I was showing a visitor some of the landmarks near our home,、uh, south of Atlanta. We stopped at the Lovejoy Station Chick Fil A sandwich. A Chick Fil A restaurant and find a birthday party in progress. A three-year-old girl was surrounded by her parents, aunt, uncles, friends, and two older cousins dressed up as vegetarian characters. It was my first unexpected opportunity of the day. I grabbed a handful of plush toy cows, miniature version of our famous Chick Fil A billboard character, and hand- held one out for the little girl. What did the say say? What does the cow say? I asked. She puzzled at me. She looked at me, puzzled. Remember, she was barely three. What do cows say? I repeated. Moo! She replied. Everyone laughed at her. Laughed at her pretty good answer, and I gave her a cow and a hug and whispered the real answer to her. Then I turned to her mother and asked. What the cow says, eat more chicken. Her mother cried. Yeah, I said, and I gave her an eat more chicken cow, as everyone in the restaurant left with us. 
Then one by one, each person quoted the cows and left. I gave most of the cows, and we all made some. We made some special memories that they will associate with Chick Fil A. I enjoyed few things more than making people, especially children, smile. The cows do the trick almost every time. In the middle of the same afternoon, my friend and I drove to Truth Grill, a restaurant we opened in 1996 to commemorate my 50th year in the restaurant business. I like to tell people that nine the nineteen ninety six Summer Olympic Games were held in Atlanta as part of our celebration. Truist Grill is a nineteen fifty style diner spilling over with atmosphere. Rotating neon sign out front gives customer their first clue that they're about to take a nostalgic ride, and the vintage cars parked out front reinforce the method message. We step inside Truett Grill at about three p.m., and the place was alive with the energy of young people. I guess kids of every generation are drawn to a din- diner. People were waiting to get a ta- get get tables, so we took a pair of stool at the counter and ordered milkshakes. I struck a conversation with a group of dozen teenagers who were sitting, uh, at near booths and several stools around us. They were from the church in Griffin, Georgia, and had been working all day fixing a fix up a house for an elderly couple. Their smiles and laughter made it clear that they had enjoyed the, uh, devoting, devoting themselves to the well-being of others, and their devotion was another reminder to me of the promise of the coming generation. I wanted them to know that I appreciated. What they have done, so I gave them each of them BR gas car with a free chicken sandwich. Another inspecting opportunity. Small cows and a free sandwich are talking of my appreciation, and the people seem to enjoy receiving them. The unexpected opportunity I enjoy most is the opportunity to turn a frown into a smile. Many of my unexpected opportunities occurred on airplanes. One afternoon, I was sitting on the plane as while as we waited and waited, it rolled away from the gate for takeoff. The delay continued over an hour until finally the captain announced that our plane was broken and other one been called in to take us on the destination. The passengers groaned. The captain then announced, "Three Cathy found their Chick Fil A on board, on board, waiting with waiting with the rest of them." I asked the flight attendant if I could hand out the BR guest cards to a passenger. I had a stack in my pocket as I always do, you know, for everybody on the plane. Passengers up and down the aisle smiled, and several told me it wasn't such a bad day after all. One other plane, on other plane, a man recognized me and sat in the empty side seat beside me. He introduced himself and said he's aware of Chick Fil A and some of the principles that we uphold. Before we, before he moved to a sign seat, he wondered if I would be able to advise him in a matter that's troubling him. He had two children, fifteen years old son and seventeen year old daughter, and he was worried about the many temptation they were about facing with drug, alcohol, sex, and inappropriate friends. The man had ordered a beer from a flight attendant, and I had thought about the inconsistent of his concern and his action. I didn't want to turn him off, turn him off by crossing, coming across a pious, but I did want to illustrate a point. Do you encourage your son and daughter to drink beer? I asked. No, I don't. I looked down and then looked down at the beer in his hand. He didn't say anything more to him about it. He got up and moved his seat before he planned to go. We had an impact on our children by what we say, but particularly what we do. They forgot forget many of the things we say, but they observe everything we do. We can't expect to keep beer in the refrigerator and expect our fifteen year old not to drink beer. These are the un- unexpected opportunities parents receive every day. Opportunities to influence their children positively by their actions. When the plane landed, and I stood at the leave, I stood to leave. The man came up and thanked me for what he had said. A woman called some years later, later some years ago, and asked, "Do you remember the dwarf that sat in the restaurant?" Yes, I said. Well, I know who has it. She was referring to a little statue of dwarf that stood in the dwarf house in my first restaurant. 
for several years but had been stolen about the same time that a sign over the dwarf door out front was stolen. I had a posted a signage offering $25 reward for returning the dwarf, but after more than a decade, it was still missing. I always assumed some teenage, teenage prankster had taken one night on a dare while they were in the restaurant. The woman on the telephone continued, My father and I have looked at the door, looked at the door for, many, for years and we were trying to persuade my brother to take, bring it back. We should have made him return it years ago. I knew that the woman's brother had been teenage thief and the dwarf has been sitting in their bedrooms ever since. We never told him to bring it back, she said. Now he's getting out of prison for stealing a car. And we know that if we had insisted he do the right thing a long time ago, he might not have stolen the car. As it turned out, the dwarf thief had a partner in crime who had taken the sign and likewise had grown up to become a criminal and serve time in prison. He called me on the phone and he had become Christian while in the prison. Upon his release, he was going to... He's going through some things in his garage and came across our son. He brought it back and apologized saying he wanted to make it right. And you remember the dwarf was stolen? He asked. Yes, I said. Somebody recently called and said her brother had it. Well, I know who it is. I'm going to talk to him. A few days later, a man came, a man came in carrying a dwarf. He was followed by his three little girls. Daddy, why are you giving him our dwarf? The girl asked. The man made a joke and never apologized for her action. Like his sister, I wonder what would have, I wonder what would what might have happened if she and her their father had insisted boy to the right thing years earlier. They missed a valuable and expected opportunity. The statue, the statue and the sign were now in our corporate office museum along with their stories to remind, remind us to be alert for opportunities. Sometimes I enjoy creating unexpected opportunities for others. I was mentoring a young man who lived in the Birmingham, Alabama. He needed a car and I wanted to help him. More than the car, though, he needed direction. I sent him a series of sermon taped by Dr. Charles Stanley, pastor at Fort Bethesda in Atlanta, and asked him to listen to him. My hope was that we could discuss some of the Dr. Stanley's messages and my friends will grow spiritually. As a reward for listening to the tape, I was going to give him a car he wanted, but I didn't tell him that rather on the last sermon tape, I recorded my own message over the Dr. Stanley's words, telling my friend that keys to his cards waiting for him in Atlanta. Over the next few weeks, I called my friend periodically asking him about the progress and he had made listening to the tape. Each time he promised he would get started listening soon. But with his busy schedule, he had not gotten around it. After more than a month, it became apparent that he was going to he was not going to listen to the tape and I suggested that he bring them to back to me. While he sat in my office, we listened to the last tape together. Both of us terribly sad because it's missed opportunity. It was powerful less it was a powerful lesson, one that neither he nor I will forget. To receive a blessing, we often have to take action first. Sometimes a bad situation can turn into an ex unexpected opportunity. Some years ago, I bought an older house on a large lot in a College Park, Georgia, and it made a remodel so that we could use it as our second foster home. When it came time to have our property rezoned, however, the neighbors adamantly opposed our efforts. They didn't want our children to live in their neighborhood. They didn't believe in believe us when we told them about the caliber of our program and the dedication of our children to overcoming their circumstances. The zoning board exceeded the will of the neighbors and we were blocked from using the house for a foster home. About that time I learned that a boy in the Sunday school class I taught has seven siblings and was living with his parents in a three bedroom one bath from home. The father sold cleaning supplies, the mother homeschooled the children and took in sewing for extra income. They were working hard and dedicating themselves to their children, but they likely would never afford a larger home. 
the opportunity appeared obvious. I made some discreet inquiries to make sure that the family would not be offended or embarrassed if I offered to swap houses with them. It takes both it takes both a gracious receiver and giver to make the gift work. The family now lives in a house appropriate to their size. You may have noticed a pattern to these unexpected opportunities. The most of them are opportunities to give. Nearly every moment of every day, we have the opportunity to give something to someone else. Our time, our love, our resources. I have always found more joy in giving when I did not expect anything in return. That's why I am so grateful that the Lord brought foster children into my life. Truly needy individuals who need more than money and who appreciate a smile, hugs as much as popcorn and ice cream. Unexpected opportunities almost always carry with them the chance to be a faithful steward and to influence others positively. These were the lessons I began to learn in childhood from my mother, my sisters, and others around me who cares enough to teach me. We change the world and ourselves by our response to unexpected opportunities. How will you respond today?